are going to go ahead and create another Azure Cosmos DB account. So in the prior chapter, remember we had gone ahead and create an Azure Cosmos DB account of the SQL API. This time we'll go ahead and create an Azure Cosmos DB account with the table API. So what are we going to learn? Basically how to use the table API in Azure Cosmos DB account. So let's go ahead on to Azure. So here we are in Azure. Now let me go ahead and add a new resource. So again, I'll search for Azure Cosmos DB. I'll hit on create. I'll choose my subscription and my resource group. Let me enter an account name. This time for the API, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Azure table API. I'll leave all the other settings as they are. I'll leave the location as rest US. Notice over here, we don't have the ability to create that free tier when it comes to the Azure Cosmos DB account because we already consumed this with our last Azure Cosmos DB account. Let me go on to networking, leave everything as it is, and let me go ahead and create this Azure Cosmos DB account. So let's come back once we have the Azure Cosmos DB account in place. Now, once the deployment is complete, I'll go ahead on to the resource. So similar to the Azure Cosmos DB account that we had for the SQL API, we can go on to Data Explorer. Now over here, we can directly start creating tables using the Azure Table API. So here we give the table name or the table ID. So again, if you want to store customer information, we can enter that as a table ID. Again, you have the throughput. I'm going to leave it as it is. Let me go ahead and click on OK. Once we have our table in place, over here we have a concept known as entities. Now again, you can go ahead and open this up in the full screen. So here we can go ahead and add a new entity onto the table. Now in table storage, there are two important properties that are required for a table entity. So first is the partition key. So this is similar to the SQL API, which is available in Azure Cosmos DB. So you decide on which property of your data basically becomes the partition key. And then your data is distributed across multiple partitions. And then to go ahead and basically uniquely identify an item in that particular partition, you can then specify what should be the property that's defined as the row key. So let's say over here, again, you want the partition key as the customer city. Here you can't go ahead and change the property. So the property remains as partition key and the row key. It is your responsibility to map these properties onto the properties of your class or your entity object. So over here, let's say I want to mention the partition key has my city. I can then go ahead and give a value And let's say for the row key, I want to mention has the customer ID. I can then go ahead and add an additional property. So I can specify the customer name. Here you have the different types that are available. You can then go ahead and give a name. You can go ahead and click on add entity. So you can see your entity over here. So you have the ability to add more entities. You can edit an existing entity. You can go ahead and delete entities. You can also go ahead and run queries as well. You basically add clauses over here. So if you click on add a new clause, here you can define what should be the value of the partition key that you want to query based on. You can go ahead and add additional clauses as well. Over here, you can also choose the row key, the timestamp and the customer name. Right, I just want to give you an idea that you can use different APIs when it comes to Azure Cosmos DB. Learn with WizLabs. Success certified.